My family migrated to the U.S. Uh, when me and my sister were just in elementary school. Uh, I was born into a family uh, very committed to their faith. Uh, we would go to church together on Sundays. We would say family prayer, say the rosary together. I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland most of my life. And from the start, we belonged to the Sir Malabar community, and which later became my home parish called St. Alfonso. My parents were just wanted to provide the best for my sister and myself, giving us a good education, faith, a good church community. They were the best examples of what it meant to love God and serve Him. But it was in high school when I when I felt something was missing. I felt it, if you know, an emptiness. I wasn't happy. I was looking for answers, the meaning of life. But as a, as a high school kid. Uh, sometimes you go into those problems, you go into those areas where you just try to find everything uh, in the world, what the world would give you and, and the world promises you. I started wearing masks, uh, one at school, one at home, one at church, again and again trying to find happiness in all the wrong places. Started to fall into different sins, trying to please people and family, I didn't know who I was anymore. God didn't mean anything to me. After I had my personal encounter with Christ through the Jesus Youth Retreat, I could not go back to my old way of life. I felt a deeper longing. Something was missing. Still unsure of what God was calling me to. My hopes and dreams were to have a family, children, six figures. And that's when God had his funny ways of turning it around in moments when you least expect it. It all started on one parish night. Uh, I think it was in the Feast of Pentecost uh, when a religious sister uh, shared her personal vocation story. Uh, and, it, and it struck me immediately. Uh, I couldn't really pinpoint exactly what it was, but it was her joy. It was that radical life, radical commitment that she gave for Jesus, for, for wanting to serve the church and so this was the beginning of my discernment process. There were several signs and moments in my life where God continued to speak to me. And during the beginning of my junior year in college, I was still involved in my parish, but still had this deeper longing of wanting to do something out of the ordinary. And I kept trying to fill this void in myself with everything else that the world offered. And it was at that time when I went to Haiti for a mission trip with the Jesus Youth Movement. I met a, a missionary priest from Italy. I got a chance to spend most of my time with him. Uh, his name is Father Isaiah. Uh, there was something, just something about him that is very attractive. Uh, he was a holy man, full of joy, possessed a sh shepherd's heart. And, and this is something that really, really struck with me, even going back to my first experience with the sister. But it was his willingness to, to continually serve. You know, the sacrifice, the joy, the courage. Um, and, he, and he really loved our Lord. And, and this is when I uh, really questioned myself. You know, is this really what I wanted? The desire started to grow. And I still was asking God for that one last final sign. And I took that crucial step in going for a discernment retreat run by the Archdiocese of Baltimore. It was on the last day of the retreat during a night which was service, where I felt a deep distress. I started questioning myself, doubting if this was really what God wanted for me. And that's when I heard that voice from my heart, not a vocal voice, but a voice from our good Lord saying, Melvin, do you love me? Melvin, do you love me? Melvin, do you love me? The same words that our Lord spoke to Peter. And he said the following words, feed my sheep, tend my sheep. And this was the moment before the Holy Eucharist, when I came to know that my Lord and my God was calling me to the priesthood. And I remember being in that chapel, there was another person there, but just to make sure I wasn't hearing things or making things up, I, I opened my eyes and looked around a little bit, um, and I, I knew where this was, this this passage in scripture and so I went up to my room I opened up the Bible and the very last verse it says follow me you know and the Lord spoke directly to me just like he spoke to to Peter 
You know, and this was that first invitation. This was that flyest and final sign where God was calling me. And I didn't hesitate. I didn't wait, wait any longer. And I told him, I will follow you. And after entering the seminary for the St. Thomas Sir Malabar Diocese of Chicago, it brought me to a more refined view of the priesthood, a sense of calling, giving me a greater clarity. It gave me a chance to hear the calling for myself, despite my brokenness. And with God's grace, I was able to understand what it meant to surrender my life for Christ and His Church. These past couple of months, nearly a year into my ministry as a deacon, I could definitely say that this is what I have been waiting for all my life. I know this is the fulfillment of my hopes and dreams, and nothing will satisfy or divide my heart other than giving my life to Jesus Christ. And that as a future parish priest for the diocese, I, I recall uh, the, the beautiful words of Archbishop Fulton Sheen uh, when he said, A priest is not his own, and this is my prayer that I pray that I may live in humble, charitable service to God and His Church. And I am aware and convinced that my life doesn't belong to me anymore. In my preaching, service of the sacraments, to the people of God, I want to remain only as an instrument in God's hands.